Hello and thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time visiting, I certainly appreciate you giving me an opportunity and I hope that you'll return. I have several repair videos that might be able to help you out. Please consider a subscription. For those that are returning, as always, thank you for the continued support. Uh, please be sure to like and comment. I read every comment. I try to respond to every comment and that's always appreciated. Uh, today we're going to be working with the uh, catalytic converters on the Honda J-Series engine. Uh, these came off of a 2007 Honda Ridgeline with the uh, J35 in it. And you can see that these guys are some monsters. That is a lot of heat shield and a lot of a uh, catalytic converter. And what brought us to the point of having to work with the catalytic converters on this, a uh, family that I'm friends with, their uh, son had recently uh, purchased his first new to him car, which was a 07 Ridgeline uh, from a used car lot. Now, when we got the car, uh, he took it to get inspected. It was showing that the check engine light was commanded on, although it wasn't on the dashboard. I made a previous video about that. I uh, found out somebody had gone in there, plucked the uh, LED off of the instrument cluster and uh, sent it on its way like that. Now, the codes that were stored in it was P0420 and P0430, which shows low catalyst bank one and bank two, which means both of the catalytic converters uh, were failing the test that the uh, computer does to see if they're storing oxygen correctly. So my first thought was, okay, there's, there's a fix for that. If the catalyst is not working properly in that, uh, there, you can purchase these items here. They're called uh, spark plug defoulers. And these are actually, what you do is you put them in the bung for the downstream O2 sensor, and then you put the O2 sensor in and it backs the probe out of the, uh, the, the flow just a little bit. It supposedly can help with that. Uh, it can help the, trick the computer to think that it's actually doing, the catalytic converters are doing their jobs correctly. So I did do that, uh, it did not work. So the next step was to pull the catalytic converters and I'm gonna show you on the bench here what I found. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you in close here. Uh, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna shine the light in the back and then I'm gonna put the camera in the front that you see through. There's supposed to be a honeycomb screen, looking screen in there that has the uh, catalyst material in it. Let's see how this shows up. And as you can see, all of that has been removed. The other cat is exactly the same. So that ruined the catalytic converters. I looked up the uh, price for, because of the way these things are shaped, that you have to actually buy direct fit ones. You can't buy those MagnaFlow ones and make them work with uh, this car. The uh, OEM or close to OEM, each one of these is almost $2,000. Uh, so basically it took $11,000 uh, purchase and it's gonna turn it into a $15,000 purchase. Now I'm pretty sure that the odometer reading on this car was probably not correct because when I pulled the uh, instrument cluster out before, it had handwriting on it, it was missing bolts. Uh, somebody had swapped the instrument cluster probably for one that had less mileage. Uh, these things were clogged up. They pulled them out, ripped the insides out, plucked the uh, check engine lights, and then sold this car. If I could have that person stand in front of me right today, I'd call him exactly what he was. If he took a swing at me, I would uh, be glad to oblige. So to avoid the uh, $4,000 bill, I actually, okay, we're going to have to go aftermarket. It's just not worth it. And I know this is going to hurt uh, Eric O's feelings over at uh, South Main Auto if he were to ever see this, but I had to go with the Dorman product. Here is the um, part number for either the front or the back. And here is the part number for the other one. Uh, since those cats are already on the car, I can only show you this picture here and uh, it show you how much smaller they are than the ones that actually came off of the vehicle. Now, uh, when I got into this, the front bank is not too bad. The bank number two, which is on the front, is fairly easy to get to. Bank two was a nightmare. Again, I've never done this repair before. I had kind of had to go by the seat of my pants. And uh, it, it basically, to get that back one off, you have to take the intake plenum off. Uh, just to be able to, to reach back and get to it. Uh, you have to take the heat shield off around the uh, axle in the back because it wants to wrap around in this section right here. And there's no way to get this up through the back. You have to actually go through the wheel well to get it out. Uh, the doorman, since it was smaller, I was able to put it in through the top and that took care of it. At any rate, this will be the repair video. I'm going to try to make this quick since it's really pretty basic. You just unbolt and bolt new stuff back on. I'll come back and finish this up after I show this. Okay, uh, the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the uh, catalytic converters from underneath the vehicle. Uh, the front one you can get to probably without having to support the vehicle off the ground, but the back one, uh, in my case, I definitely have to have it up a little bit. So I have it up, of course, supported by jack stands, and we'll crawl up here, I'm gonna show you the uh, parts that you need to disconnect from the exhaust system. Okay, this is the front catalytic converter here. Uh, it has three uh, 14 millimeter fasteners that are holding it to the exhaust here. 
and also when you this is the uh, o2 sensor on the bottom and you'll need to find its connectors and disconnect it uh, some of those are probably going to break on you and it's uh fine to use a zip tie to put those back where they belong also in the back now on this back one it's a little tricky i'm going to show you how i did it and the uh, first thing that has to happen is this cross member needs to come off it has two i think they're 14 or they're either 12 or 14 millimeter uh fasteners on each side that hold that up you just pull those out and uh, take it down and that's going to let you drop the exhaust a little bit further because you're going to need all the room you can get because the catalytic converter has to come out through the wheel well over here it's the same here it has the same three bolts that connect the flange of the catalytic converter like i showed you on the front now another trick uh, the heat shield is so large on these uh, factory um catalytic converters there's a heat shield that wraps around let me get the light up to it see if you can see that uh, it goes around the axle here and again I'm, this is a very awkward angle i apologize for the light wanting to wiggle but i'm talking about this piece right here there are three fasteners that hold that to the uh the jack shaft mount on the back of the engine so you'll need to get that off and get it spun around and pulled out of the way the best you can to give yourself as much room to work around that catalytic converter as you can all right with the uh cat's disconnected from the exhaust at the bottom now i've lowered it back down to make it a little bit easier to reach over and we're going to go ahead and start disconnecting the uh, connections you have your upper o2 and your lower o2 are both right in this vicinity uh, the you need to make sure that it's already disconnected from its um, plastic mount points and, and all you have to do is just squeeze and pull and you for each one of these yeah that was a two-hander and uh, also the lower one is connected to this mount point here and what you have to do is reach under and just you find the uh, pull for it pull it back and then pull it straight down and that one's completely disconnected and you need to remember how they're ran because when you put this all back together you want your uh, wires for the o2 sensors run the way honda intended so that that rubbing against anything that they might burn through okay once you have the uh, o2 sensors disconnected what also has to happen is this uh, front radiator fan has to come out it's not too big of a deal you have a fastener here one here and then there's two more on the bottom that are that you just have to loosen because they just slide over it and you also need to get all the wiring harness disconnected off of that uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of that right now get that out of the way and go after these all right with the uh, bottom two loose it's just a matter of picking that straight up out now and just careful not to rub your radiator with it okay with the fan removed you see we have all kinds of room in here to work now so we're going to go after the uh, fasteners the 12 millimeter that hold the catalytic converter to the manifold uh, two on the top uh, two on the bottom on either side we're going to go ahead and get those pulled loose and we're going to be ready to pull this whole thing out now we're just going to work our way around and get these all in there all right, with all those fasteners out, I'm ready to pull this back now. And remember that you have some studs going through that bottom flange. You'll have to pick up off of that. A little bit of wiggling. And don't forget that O2 sensor at the bottom. You want that all to come up and don't let it get caught on anything. There we go. And we're out. Leave it there. Okay, and the kit did come with new studs and fasteners for the uh, lower part, as well as the uh, front gasket and the uh, ring for the um, the flange. And I'm going to move the camera. I'm going to point in here. I don't know if it's going to show up, but you can actually see in there at the bottom the honeycombing, the callus material that is supposed to be inside of this. I'm going to get these studs installed, and we'll come back when we're ready to reinstall this. All right, I've got the uh, studs installed, uh, have the O2 sensors reinstalled. Just make sure you put these in the right places. Uh, the long one should be on the bottom bung, and of course the shorter one goes on the top bung. Uh, I've got this ready to put back in now. The install is the reverse of the uh, removal. We're going to go ahead and get this mounted back up, and then we're going to move on to that rear one. Uh, before I move on to the back, I'll just show you this too. Just make sure, again, that you get these things routed right. Uh, you see how the bottom one comes around the motor mount there? And then, you, of course, you bring it back up and you clip it back onto uh, this piece of metal here where it belongs. All right, we're ready to move on to removing the upper intake manifold. Uh, what we're going to do, we have a couple places we have to disconnect. Uh, you got both your PCV valves. This is the front one. And then, actually, this might be a brake booster back here. Uh, but these two vacuum lines need to come off. Uh, you need to get your uh, connectors for anything that's going to go with your intake manifold. 
over here on the right of the throttle body, you see this as well. This needs to go. Uh, figure out how you're going to do your purge valve uh, here in the back. You can just, um, you could disconnect the lower vacuum hose in the upper fitting, but I think maybe getting that lower vacuum hose might be a little bit of a problem. So I think I'm just going to pull these two fasteners off and just move it out of the way. And then uh, everything that goes around your throttle body needs to be disconnected. Uh, your part, this part of your PCV valve system as well needs to be pulled out of the hose and we just want to get the air box out of the way. Okay, all the things I talked about I have disconnected now. Uh, one thing I forgot about was the uh, water lines that run to your throttle body. I do not want to disconnect those unless I absolutely have to. So I'm going to try to, when I get this off, I'm just going to rotate uh, this end back towards the front of the car and uh, see if we can just get it far enough out of the way where I can get uh, a little easier on that back catalytic converter. Uh, to get this off, you have a series of, uh, looks like 10s and 12 millimeter uh, fasteners on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and break those loose and uh, come back when I'm ready. Okay, after looking at uh, these two 10 millimeters here, they just hold this little part on this part of your EGR, so I'm, I'm pretty sure those can stay. I'm just gonna go after the uh, 12 millimeter fasteners. I'm gonna kind of work my way outside the insides and since this aluminum, I'll give it the best chance I can to not tear up. All right, and it should be free now. Okay, uh, this uh, my thought there's not going to work. The uh, bottom water line here that comes up under your throttle body, I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of trouble to get to. Um, and plus, I would prefer not to have this dripping uh, coolant for the next you know hour while I'm working on this. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and remove the throttle body. It's uh, four 12, mm, 12 millimeter fasteners and just have this set out of the way and we're going to be able to get the intake then. Hopefully we'll be able to save the gasket. If not, we'll, they're about five bucks, not a big deal. That one may live to fight another day, we'll see. Okay, I sh this should be free now to just pick it straight up and move it out of the way. All right, now once we get to this part, we are gonna have to take off, it looks like the uh, rear uh, valve cover. Uh, this is the wiring harness that comes across here. Uh, as far as I can tell right now, it's just got one uh, fastener here in the back, and this, these uh, plugs here at the top go down, it comes out from here and feeds into the actual um, coil packs. So I'll show you on the front here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the coil packs out of the back. Uh, they'll be, you disconnect them, the squeeze and pull just like anything else, and then they actually have a, a Allen head fasteners that you go after. And once the Allen heads are out, they just pull straight out with these disconnected. I'm going to do that off camera since that's in the back. It's going to be kind of hard to see. That's how you do it, though. Okay, we're at this point now. I've got I've taken the rear valve cover off. Uh, it's pretty impossible to film how to do that. You kind of do a lot of it blind, but uh, your front valve cover is your guide. The bolts are generally the same. Uh, it's these two lower ones here that you really can't see. Uh, you have to take your uh, coil packs out with, with these hex heads like we discussed. The wiring harness here has two 10 millimeter fasteners. There's one here and then there's one on the back that you can't see that hold it to the valve cover that you need to get. And then once all that's disconnected and the coil packs are out, you can pick it up high enough to snake your valve cover out from underneath it. It's a little bit of wiggling, but I'm sure you can do it. Uh, but that does give us all kinds of room back here to get to, get you some more light on this, this rear catalytic converter. It's gonna be exactly the same as the front one with this, you have to take this four fasteners off the front and make sure you see the connector there and then the orange connector coming up from the bottom, those have to be disconnected. And then we're gonna pull that right out. I'm not gonna be able to film any of this. I'm gonna to have to climb up, pretty much sit on top of this engine and get back there. I'll come back when I'm finished with it. Okay, after a pretty good fight, I finally had this catalytic converter loose. I'm gonna show you this. You kind of have to do a bunch of feeling back here, but it is not gonna come straight up out of the back. You're gonna to have to drop it down. And I'm gonna show you here in the front right wheel well where it's gonna pull through at. As you can see here, I've got to this point just kind of sitting beside the axle and uh, just going to have to try to wiggle it the rest of the way out around this uh, sway bar end link here and it should be mine. All right, I'm going to catch up where I'm at on the back one now. I've got the uh, back one installed. Uh, everything's put back together underneath it now. I've got the uh, valve cover back on. The um, I don't know how well you can see that. Have the coil, uh, the, uh, coil back in it and attached and uh, screwed back down. I uh, have this rail uh, 
and screw back down to the back of the uh, valve cover as well. What's left here is going to put the intake manifold on, uh, get that torque down. I'll look up the torque specs here in a second, let you know what it is. It's going to be the reverse of the install. Just drop it on and uh, run your uh, bolts down. Okay, I uh, looked at the torque spec uh, for the intake manifold bolts, and they're going to be 192 inch pounds, or also 16 foot pounds. Uh, we're going to work from the inside out, uh, just like you do on most things that are made out of aluminum. And for those of you that like to hear the click, there you go. And there's another one. And I'll come back when I'm finished. Okay, we're going to get this uh, other cover back on now. I'm just going to reuse this gasket. Usually when they're made out of metal, I'm not too concerned about it. But one thing you do want to make sure it has a rubber ridge that runs across here. If that thing's moved out of whack or whatever, make sure that you get that back in between right there. And again, we're going to, go, we're going to tighten inside to out. Okay, we got the uh, top plate uh, started. Uh, I'm going to go with the torque spec. Uh, these are 10 millimeters. Uh, with 109 inch pounds, which seems to be about the torque range for all of the, uh, about every 10 millimeter bolt on your Honda engine. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, throttle body back on. I've looked at the gasket on this. It does, it looks like it probably survived the ordeal. Uh, if you do this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and replace this right now. I may come back and replace it later since this, it doesn't cost me much to get here. So we're just going to put that back on. We have our two 12 millimeter bolts that go to the bottom and the nuts go on the top and we're going to torque these down to 16 foot pounds also. Okay, I have the uh, the throttle body back installed with the uh, air hose, the PCVs hooked up here, uh, the map sensors hooked up, uh, I think that's the air intake. All this is back together. I have the, um, the uh, purge valve back connected here. The parking brake, I mean the power brake booster vacuum line is here and then here in the front the PCV valve is back together and I, I'm not sure what this is but the uh, connector is back to that and that should be about it. I got the fan back in and that's all connected up as well. So we're going to go ahead and crank this up and we're going to see how we're doing. So there you have it. That actually took me several hours on uh, Memorial Day. That's that's how I got to spend my Memorial Day cussing and uh, arguing over, especially that rear cat. So anybody that is stuck with this problem, uh, you're going to tackle this repair yourself. You can do it in your garage with hand tools, but I do not feel for you. It's very uncomfortable. My ribs have not been the same since I had to lay over the uh, the engine in that car for you know hours working on that back cat. So. I do appreciate each and every one of you that uh, stayed tuned to the end of this. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.